Hi, I'm Melissa from Sogo Survey. There's a good chance that, like me and our team here at Sogo Survey, you've been working from home a lot more often lately. So the big question is, when are we going back? And are we going back? This is a question that we're hearing from our team, from our clients, from candidates applying for jobs, and it's a question that nobody has a really good answer for. As you know, when we don't know all the answers, we need to ask more questions. Let's take a look today at how to launch a return to work survey. So the question is, what will it take to make your employees feel like now is the time, that we're all in the same path, we're all in the same boat, and we all know that we're agreed that it's time to go? To take a look at this return to work survey, which I should say is a template available in our survey bank, we'll start with the rationale. I've already covered that one, but it's a big idea. It's a big deal right now, so it's a good place to start. Um, take a look at those questions, best practices in implementing this survey, um, a possible report, what your report might look like here, and some advanced options as well. So again, deciding when and if to reopen a workplace, no matter what kind of a workplace you have, um, is a huge challenge. Um, there are no easy answers here. There are the logistical questions um, in terms of how are we going to clean, what are the you know, personal protective equipment that we all need, uh, but also connecting with your employees is a really, really important part of the process. It's one of the most important elements of the reopening process. Uh, we know that people are unique individuals, of course, and everyone will have their own different feedback. But when you notice those common trends and common concerns, it'll help you to prioritize uh, your resources and make plans to deal with the things that your team is most concerned about um, to begin with. So taking a look at the questions, one of the first places to start, of course, is introductory text, letting people know this is a big deal, this is something that we prioritize and we really value your opinion. Acknowledge the challenges, uh, make sure it has the right language that you're used to using that reflects the personality of your organization as well. So customize that. Basic identifying information, not too much, uh, but of course if you are going to be doing follow-up by location or by department, for example, those are important things. And I'll come back to this on best practices, but don't drill down too far. Just keep it basic. That's most actionable, um, again, by those larger picture divisions like location or department. A metric question, how ready are you to return to work? It's kind of the basic idea there. Uh, but then drill down on that too. Find out what are the reasons. Allow people to give multiple reasons and allow people to also give some open-ended responses there too. So if they have some additional feedback, um, it's really hard to anticipate every single possible concern, um, but give them the opportunity to share their own as well. Then also give the opportunity to drill down on some areas of concern potentially or satisfaction as well. Um, how satisfied, how productive are they uh, in their current work environment, maybe working from home or the current situation. Uh, but also think about how do they feel about how the company has been handling this situation too. This is a really good opportunity. Sounds a little bit selfish, of course, but it's definitely for the greater good. If you're not, if you find out that you're not communicating effectively, um, that is really important information too, because you could be doing great things to help your team, but if they're not getting the picture or they don't feel that it's coming through, um, that is a huge problem that you need to deal with as well, not just the fixes, um, but the communication. Also the chance to share that additional feedback I've mentioned already earlier, but it's very hard to anticipate what everyone is feeling, so give them the chance to explain. Of course, thank you message, um, really great idea in this case to give people the chance to share um, any other follow-up comments. You could give them um, a follow-up message, a link to Sogo Connect, or a link to uh, email address, or somebody's name, something like that too, um, in case they have any additional feedback or any questions um, about this topic. It's obviously a pretty complex one. So best practices, of course, ideally, this is just one more in a chain of conversations, an ongoing conversation that you've been having with your team. Um, this shouldn't just be the only time that you've talked to them, of course, too. Ideally, as a best practice, you have these ongoing conversations or these ongo ongoing um, touch points and employee pulse check, other engagement type activities as well, too. This should be part of that strand, part of that journey as well together. Remember that you're keeping it personal as well, too. Again, this is a very challenging situation for many people, and it's very hard to tell. You don't know, you know, if someone's been personally affected and you've had a loss or um, health issues in their family as well. Um, so you just really need to be sensitive, um, much more than in a normal circumstance. So be kind, be empathetic in all of your language choices while being professional and, you know, using the tone and voice reflective of your organization. Metric questions are good, but again, 
it's not science, these are feelings too. So you're measuring perceptions, so open-ended questions are valuable as well too. Um, remember, if you are going to use those open-ended questions, again, a great idea, but do commit to reading the answers. There is nothing worse than ignoring somebody's heartfelt comment that they thought they were giving this directly to you and you never even bothered to read it. That is a terrible practice. So if you know that you can't commit to reading open-ended questions, really minimize the amount of space that you're going to give people or bring in backup, bring in other people on your team to help as well because that content can be very, very valuable. When you take a look at the results, of course, some single select questions, readiness to return. You can take a look at however you want this, you know, organizing that you're looking at an example in an Omni report, presented however you want, word clouds, open-ended responses. Again, segmenting these by location, by department, makes them as actionable as possible too. Um, and getting into those advanced options, like I said, minimize the amount of um, demographic information, but do use data population. It's okay to make it visible, make it editable if you need. Um, if people feel very uncomfortable for whatever reason sharing that information, that's possible. There's a situation in, want, in, in which you really want to be transparent with your employees. So you shouldn't be secret, co secretly collecting personal identifying information here that really drills it down too far. Um, to that same point, you might even consider making this project anonymous. Um, people might feel very sensitive or they might not feel you know, there might feel like there's some concern about being entirely honest and candid about their situations, um, but the anonymity features are a great way. You can have some of that basic identifying information like department or location, um, but with this feature you won't even know who said what, even if you send them direct email invitations. Um, again, again with the text boxes, give them enough space. Um, make sure that you're representing by the visual there how much space you're really allowing. Um, multiple rows, the entire width of the screen I would generally use. Um, maybe don't include the character count indicator that can feel like it's sort of ticking away the characters available. It's fine on something like Twitter, but here if people are feeling, um, you know, very emotional or want to share some heartfelt feelings here, um, it might be more stressful than anything else. So give them an amount of space that makes sense and also give them enough characters for it. And finally, a big note here I've already mentioned, segment your results. So when you have those segmenting um, demographic type questions um, earlier in the project, you'll be able to use them for um, the metric questions, for any of the other drill down questions, even for open-ended questions as well too. So you can get um, the idea of trends or specific issues in certain locations or with certain groups. Again, nobody knows what's going on in your company better than your employees. So find out, make the decision that's right for all of you. I wish you all the best in your return to work decisions. If you have any follow-up on this, we'd love to connect with you. Um, you can always reach out to us here, um, Support One. You can always visit our website, SogoSurvey.com, uh, and connect with us on social media, at SogoSurvey. Again, we wish you all the best. Thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care.